bust fairly well along as far as shape. Um, one of the things that is a little tricky when you're working on a bust, whether it's an animal or person or even a you know, fantasy kind of creature, is getting your proportions right. So I've been using my paddle and I've been using this uh, serrated rib to try to rough in my shape. So I took a little bit out of the neck, for example, like that. I can add some back in if I feel like there's a space missing something. And I also like to refer to a couple of, of references. One of the things you can, you can do when you're doing a person is you can simply look around at people in the, in the room. But if a person's got hair that comes down to their shoulders, you can't kind of see some of the structure. And of course, people are shaped differently. So if you're doing a man or a woman, you might be noticing different, slightly different proportions and things like that. Uh, if staring at your classmates is not your cup of tea, though, we do have some books in the studio um, this one's The Portrait in Clay, and it has some uh, sections where it shows figuring out where the eyes and ears go. It kind of has a model and then the drawings next to it. And you can kind of refer to this one for uh, help on how to place features and how to figure out proportions. If you're doing a full body model, we have um, this book as well. This shows several different ways of working, um, but it's sometimes helpful to, to help you figure out proportions. Of course, drawing books and scientific books can help as well. So I want to start placing, say, an ear or a nose or something like that, because it looks all right, but it looks like something's missing here, right? So um, to figure out where you want these things, you can refer to books, you can look at your classmates, you can also just kind of start. So I had started uh, uh, just playing around a moment ago, and I had started placing an ear. And when I had placed it, that looks a little high, right? And, uh, and if you're not sure, like my, I got more head than, than this one does here. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit lower and try it there. The nice thing about clay is if you put your pieces in and it doesn't seem right, you can just rip them off and, and place them again. Now, figuring out where the eyes go is you gotta remember head, and I've got a hairless head right now. Uh, I think it's sometimes easier to add the hair in later. Um, but I want, I want to get my eyes kind of in about the halfway area. So getting myself kind of a mark for where the eyes and where the mouth go can help me, I might even get myself centered here, can help me figure out where to put eyes, nose, mouth. So things like the nose and the ears, you can add some clay on to start getting that shape figured out. Um, I sometimes like to have a rib like this around because it helps me get kind of the underneath uh, uh, there's a shadow, you know, your nose isn't completely flat and smooth, you get, you know, your nostrils kind of come out, and so you can start to kind of rough in that shape. You don't need to get heavily into detail immediately, um, because the first challenge is where do things go? And I'd hate for you to spend a bunch of time getting your nose perfectly shaped, and then find out, ah, oh, it's really in the wrong place, and have to take it off and put it back on again. Now eyes, I recommend, once you figure out about where you want them, that you actually build those eyes. So I'm going to uh, press in some holes. I, I've got enough uh, movement in my clay, it's soft enough that I don't need to cut it away. Of course, I could use a loop tool to cut it away if I wanted to. But I'm going to kind of shape, uh, make a hole for these eyes and show you a different way to, to put these, to build these eyes essentially. So I'm going to I've put a hole in here, and I'm going to make myself some eyeballs, like this. It's probably a good idea to score and slip these in place. You can use this scoring tool to score the back. If your clay is wet enough, you may be able to get it in without any water. Oops, I made my eyeball a little too big. And then I, you see I've got mine on a banding wheel, so I can pretty quickly move this around. Once you get some weight on this thing, it's going to be un, unpleasant to try. It's going to be difficult to try to move it around a bunch. So it's going to be staying put. If you have it up on a banding wheel or if you're in a place where you can walk around it, um, that's probably my recommendation. So right now he's got these funny bug eyes happening. Um, I'm going to make him an eyelid by just kind of rolling a coil. And I'm going to start with a fairly wet clay. I'm going to start with the bottom eyelid. I'm going to make that inside edge kind of smooth. I'm not so worried about the outside edge. And then I'm actually going to smooth this into place. Now I've probably left mine a little thicker than I needed to, but I'm going to start to smooth it into place. 
He looks kind of droopy-eyed right now. But as you, so during the process of putting this together, pieces of it might look a little funny. Um, but once you, once you start putting them all together, they start to make sense. So now I'm shaping a, another eyelid to go over the top. Oops. And I'm basically making a flattened coil or a little kind of pinch shape. That, that clay's a little dry. I'm going to work with a little bit wetter clay. And of course, you see my hands are full of clay. I've been working in here for a while. If you're having a lot of trouble with crumbling clay, you might grab a wet towel and just have it at your spot so you can wipe your hands off as you go. But I'm going to add this top coil over the top. <laughs> over the top. Once I get it the right shape that I want, I keep changing my ideas here. So this lid goes over the top, and you can kind of build that eye into the face. Now this is going to take some work because it's kind of sticking out a little bit here. I'm going to get in and do some shaping kind of this way. Get up, oops, get up underneath there. A soft rib, a needle tool will also be kind of helpful tools for getting in there. Um, I, as I'm looking at this now, maybe I need to get the whole eye a little bit deeper to begin with. But my recommendation for you, you can reference the books, you can reference this video, you can reference other videos online of people who build more than I do um, to see some of the proportions. But then practice. Give yourself some, some opportunities to try it out. And if it doesn't work, rip it out. Take that eye out and try again. Um, I'm going to wait on the other eye. I do want to talk to you briefly about the lips as well. Um, similar kind of thing for the lips. You can kind of build up some of the, um, add kind of a coil in there for the lips. And you can kind of build them into place. Rather than trying to just carve them into place, you can actually add them in. And start to get some, um, some shaping happening here. So he's starting to come along. He's maybe not uh, perfect yet. He's got some issues with exact placement of eyes and ears and things like that. But you're starting to get a sense of where things are. An important thing here, one of the things that always looks, um, in beginners, when it looks kind of funny, is when they, they uh, put something in the wrong place and then are afraid to move it. Don't be afraid to take it off, move it, adjust it. Thanks.